In this video lecture of digital signal processing, we will discuss different methods of determining circular convolution. The circular convolution of two periodic signals can be determined in various ways. The first method is using linear convolution. The second method is concentric circle method. And the third one is matrix method. Now one matrix method we have also discussed for determining the linear convolution in signals and system. But the matrix method which is used for determining the circular convolution is different from the matrix method used for determining the linear convolution. Now here in this video lecture we will discuss the first method using linear convolution, which is the easiest method for determining the circular convolution. So we will understand the concept by the help of one example. Let I have a signal x of n, which is equal to 1, 3, 2, 1. And the impulse response h of n is, let 1, 1, minus 1, 1. So this is my input and this is my impulse response. So as you can see, both the signals are periodic in nature. Now we need to determine the circular convolution y of n, which is x of n, circular convolution h of n, by the help of linear convolution. So let us first determine the linear convolution for the two sequence x of n and h of n, and that is y1n, which is equal to x of n, linear convolution, h of n and we will use the matrix method for determining the linear convolution. So we will first draw the matrix. We will place the samples of x of n column wise and we will place the samples of h of n row wise. So the samples of x of n are 1, 3, 2 and 1 and the samples of h of n are 1, 1, minus 1 and 1. Now let us perform the multiplication of each samples of h of n with the input samples which are 1, 3, 2 and 1. So 1 will be multiplied with 1 and it will be 1. Then 1 into 3 is 3, 1 into 2 is 2, 1 into 1 is 1. Once again it will be 1, 3, 2 and 1. This will be minus 1, minus 3, minus 2 and minus 1. And this will be 1, 3, 2 and 1. Now we will perform the addition of diagonal elements. So my linear convolution result y1n will be equal to the first sample is 1, the second one is 3 plus 1 that is 4, the third one is 2 plus 3 plus minus 1 which is 4, next is 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0 plus 1 that is 1. Then 3 plus 1 is 4, minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, and at last it is 1. So this is the linear convolution result for the two discrete time signal x of n and h of n. Now as per the rule of linear convolution, if the length of the x of n is L and the length of the h of n is M then the length of the linearly convoluted result y1n will be l plus m minus 1. So as you can see here that x of n has 4 number of samples and h of n has 4 number of samples. So it will be 4 plus 4 minus 1. So 7 number of samples will be in y1n. So we can count here that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7 number of samples in linearly convoluted result that is y1n. 
Now, according to the circular convolution concept, if the length of the first sequence is L and the length of the second sequence is M, then the length of the circularly convoluted result Y of N will be max of L, M. So as we can see here, the length of X of N is 4 and the length of H of N is 4. So max of 4, comma 4 will be 4. So the length of the circularly convoluted result must be equal to 4. Or you can say there must be 4 number of samples in circularly convoluted result. Now let us see how to get Y of N from Y1N. So as you can see, Y1N is one double four one two one one so as we know that the circularly convoluted result must contain four number of samples we will first preserve four number of samples from the beginning so the four number of samples are one double four one the next immediate sample we will add to the first sample after that the next sample is added to the next sample and the last sample will be added to the next sample. So y of n will be 1 plus 2 that is 3, 4 plus 1 that is 5, 4 plus 1 that is 5 and the last sample will be written as it is. So this is my circularly convoluted result. So in this way we can determine the circular convolution using linear convolution. So if it is asked in the examination, doesn't matter which method you are following for the determination of linear convolution, you can use this method for the determination of circular convolution. So you can apply matrix method, you can apply analytical method, you can apply graphical method or tabular method for the determination of linear convolution. But you can use this method for determination of circular convolution. Now here we will take the same examples and this time we will use the analytical way for determining the linear convolution and after that we will find out the circular convolution. So I will write down the samples of x of n 1, 3, 2, 1 and just below the samples I will write down the samples of h of n that is 1, 1, minus 1 and 1. Now I will perform the multiplication of each sample of h of n with all the samples of x of n. So first I will multiply 1 with 1, 3, 2, 1. And the result will be 1 into 1 is 1, 1 into 3 is 3, 1 into 2 is 2, 1 into 1 is 1. Now let us multiply the second sample of h of n with each sample of x of n. And I will store the result by leaving one space from the left. So 1 into 1 is 1, 1 into 3 is 3, 1 into 2 is 2 and 1 into 1 is 1. Next I will multiply minus 1 with 1, I will place the sample by shifting 1 place and it will be minus 1, then minus 3, then 2, then minus 2, then minus 1. And at last I will multiply this one with each samples of x of n by shifting 1 place. So it will be 1 into 1, then 3, then 2, then 1. Now I will perform the addition, I will write the samples. So it will be 1, this will be 1, minus 2 is 2, then 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 5, then 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus, then 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, and this is 1, then 3 plus 2 is 5, minus 1 is 4, 3 plus 1 is 4, and this is 1. So this is my linearly convoluted result that is y1 n so the samples are 1 comma 4 comma 4 comma 1 comma 2 comma 1 comma 1 and the number of samples as you can see are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 now by using the same method we can determine the circular convolution i'll add 2 with 1 1 will be added to 4 this one will be added to this 4 
and the circularly convoluted result y of n will be this is 3 this is 5 this is 5 and the and this is 1 so this is my circular convoluted result so in this way we can determine the circular convolution by the help of linear convolution so in the upcoming lecture we will discuss about the matrix method and the concentric circle method for determining the circular convolution thank you